If your family's hot and miserable, just add an AC tune-up for only $109 from Premier Heating and Air, and you'll be cool and happy. Premier Heating and Air, a locally owned and operated company. Hester, you'll recognize it from our community for many, many years. Uh, how long have you lived in Dublin, Monty? All my life, basically, since I was about eight years old. Yeah, yeah. You've um, had a lot of great experiences in Dublin, haven't you? Yes, sir, I have. Yeah, a lot of opportunities. Yes, sir. You know, Monty, when I, I see you, and I think most people have to agree, to, when I talk to you, you're the type of guy that the glass is always half full, at least. <laughs> it's usually running over. Always right? half full, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, and and. Everything you do, you, you bring zest and zeal to. You you want to do a good job. You want to relate well to people. You It's offered you a lot of uh, enjoyment in life, hasn't it? Well, I learned young, when I was very young, if you were negative, things would be negative. So it's always better to be positive. It don't cost nothing to be friendly to anybody. Yeah. I had a lady tell me years ago, um, she had met you and anyway, she was at, uh, I think, one of the local gas stations. I won't call which one, but uh, she was about to get out and pump her gas, and you walked over and took the nozzle from her. I know who and, that was. And pumped her gas for her, and she was, a, she was astounded that you had a kind enough heart to do that. But you do that for people all over. The lady was actually having a hard time getting out of the car. Yeah. And uh, I think she recently passed, hmm. uh, but she brought a lot of, concerts and things to the Dublin Theater, and I believe that's who you're talking about. Yeah. But I yeah. remember that. Yeah. Such but, you, you know, you help you help anybody that needs help, yeah. you know. Yeah. Along the way, you've been able to help some uh, some people who uh, you really enjoyed, and, and uh, one of them, we got a, a, a print right back here, a photograph of, uh, of Herschel Walker. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you're a huge Georgia fan. You got on your Georgia. I pulled out old Georgia. This was about the best one I could get my hands on. So I pulled out this old rag and, and then um, wanted to come down. And we're going to talk about Georgia today. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Well, that's, that's a good subject. My daughter keeps me in my Georgia shirts. She, she sends them to me every year, Christmas, before the games. And then she wants my wife to take a snapshot to see that I got my Georgia stuff on. <laughs> Yeah, nothing else is happening when Georgia's playing. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first game you ever went to? What was the first Georgia game you ever went to? First, the actual first game I ever went to was when Herschel Walker played in in uh, Athens. I become a Herschel Walker fan when he was in high school, and we started getting all the hoopla. Yeah. Well, I had a restaurant then and a grocery store. It was a Mercer's Fried Chicken. Yeah. And as probably his junior year in high school, he started coming in buying chicken, and we knew who it was from what was seen on TV. Sure. That man ate 10 or 15 pieces of chicken at one setting. And I got to know him there. Yeah. And I actually went and watched his championship game, which was played in Wrightsville, Georgia. Yeah. That's how I got to know her. Yeah, yeah. And so you followed his career. Do you remember uh, when he first got to call at Georgia to go in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I remember the interview. Before the game, when the reporters asked, was he going to get to play? And Coach Dooley said, well, we got two backs ahead of him. He'd come from a small school. He's doing great. But something drastic would have to go wrong for him to get to play. And then everybody knows the history. I run right over Bates. And, and it just changed the course of Georgia football history. And to this day, in my opinion, and a lot of other opinion, if you look at polls and the different things you see sometimes. Who was the greatest college running back ever? It was and still is Herschel Walker. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about this print. Well, after they won the national championship, Daniel Moore, 
who, who's made a lot of prints. Uh, this is a signed print, numbered, and uh, actually it was signed by Herschel here, but over the years it got cleaned off and it's gone. But he had also signed it on the back. And when we had this thing reframed a couple years ago, uh, we had that part cut out and it's put in a little slot back there. So it's still signed by Herschel Walker. Yeah. Very, very limited. Very hard to find. I, I imagine if you found a signed one for sale, it'd be five thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's just the Coca-Cola tray is signed by Herschel. Now I got those signed at his home years ago when I was in the satellite business. After he got to know me, he when he left in college to go to the New Jersey Generals, the old big stationary satellites had just come out. And I hadn't put in but two or three of them. He called me up and asked me would I go put one in so his mom and daddy could watch him play football. Yeah. Although we didn't get it and get it in to the second year, they got to watch him. When he later come to Dallas, about three, four years later, they had the mesh ones in. Mm. He called me up and said, come put me in one of them. They, I want them to watch me play football. That's awesome. And so, yeah. yeah. So along the way, you probably had some conversations with Herschel. Oh, a bunch of them. Yeah. Well, did you ever ask him about his youth, about growing up, about what really drove him? Well, he showed me several things. He showed me his weight bench. I don't know how many people know that, but we all know what a weight bench looks like. His weight bench was two five-gallon buckets full of concrete with a piece of galvanized pipe in between. I don't know how much they weighed. I know I didn't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> and then back before that, when he was in college, I mean, when he was in high school, his coach, he told him he wanted to outrun his sister. And he told him, he said, you know, drag you a tire. And then when you get through running with that tire, ask her to go race. And he said, you'll beat her. Well, Herschel didn't use a tire. He did use a tire, but he used a tractor tire. And he'd run down the side of Bruton Lovett Road with a tractor tire with a rope tied around. And he said when he took it off, he could outrun her. <laughs> Just one outrun his sister. Yes. That's too good. And when you go down to, to the family, I, I know they welcomed you with open arms because you were bringing opportunity for them to watch Herschel. And at that time, what year would that have been? 80s, Pro 90s? Probably in the 80s and, and, and the, in the early, early 90s. Uh, it's yeah. probably the last time I went. Yeah. But but I met, I met his father a bunch of times when he needed a little service. We go out to the barn. He showed me his old Trans Am. He had it covered up with quilts. Just you know, real yeah. fine people. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that uh, he exemplified that. Yes. That common courtesy. Yes. He exemplified uh, her, her, it everywhere. He, he was just as humble and nice. I carried my son down there. He wanted to meet Herschel Walker. Yeah. I carried him. I know they walked around for twenty minutes when I was over there talking to his father. I mean, so it was, yeah. just, it was real nice. Yeah, yeah. And, and he, he still is a class act today, isn't he? I, you know, I believe he is. I mean, everybody has things going on in their life. I think sure. when, you, when you've learned about his illness and background, mm -hmm. I mean, I think he's standing out. In fact, I believe if you look at the man, I believe he could be the best running foot, football carrier in, in college now. Yeah. He can run the football. <laughs> right now. <laughs> We'll take a short break and be right back. Stay with us. We'll take a short break and be right back. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Mark Tarpley, Color Supply and Engine Service. Bad Boy Tractors. We're building on the legacy of Bad Boy Brand, introducing a brand new line of small, medium-sized tractors that maintain our history of combining power, performance, and built quality while delivering highest value in their class. With a tractor size to fit any farm or property from landscapers to ranchers, Bad Boy Tractors are positioned to big workforces in the field, Couple with our line of bad boy implements, cutters, you are all set to make your workday feel less of a chore. Come visit us at Cullen's Engine Supply, 910 East Jackson Street in Dublin, or 826 South Harris Street in Sandersville. We have natural gas all over town. Get yourself a natural gas tank with water heater and save space and have endless hot water. Natural gas is more efficient than electricity. And it's lighter than air. 
when you install natural gas appliances. You can get rebates up to $1,500. The city of Dublin will finance you up to $7,500. For 60 months at 0% interest. Use natural gas for all your outdoor cooking. That's a luxury. We're on call 24-7. You'll call us and we'll be there. Whether you're building the home or starting the business, City of Dublin Natural Gas has you covered. We serve commercial and residential gas all across town. Yeah! Call your gas guys! At 478-277-5048. All right, welcome you back, Monty. You know, we're talking about the great prints and the great things, you know, every time I come by here, I'm just, I'm just in awe. You got another story for me, but I got, we got a couple right here that are just incredible. Tell me about these two. Well, these two over here uh, are back from the 1980. Erskine Russell, a lot of people remember him. He, that was his last year at Georgia. They had won the state championship, and that is a very, very rare print as Dooley's dogs is a very rare print. These were done, I got all three of these prints at the same time. There was a gentleman named Pete Henderson, and he went around to local businesses um, trying to get you to look at those things and purchase. That's what he did for a living. And when he come in and brought them to me, I just, I mean, I had to have them. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And back then, we didn't have internet and all of this stuff. It was very, very hard to come by memorabilia. And when they won the championship, they had the Coca-Cola bottle yeah. and a few things like that. Now we have internet. We can just find stuff easy. Yeah, yeah. so we're talking about uh, 86, yeah, 40, 85? This was 1980, 40 years ago. Wow. I have a couple more good things from that same area. This is a Georgia Bulldog 1980 championship belt. It's numbered, it's a belt buckle. Yeah. Issued by the Citizens and Southern Bank. And they were very hard to get. I got that. And then this is something I've never seen anywhere, online or anywhere to try to get. Back in 1980, the stadium was open. You had a big hill with a railroad on it, and they're all Georgia fans know about this. Sure. Uh, a bunch of people would get out there and sit in chairs and old couches. We call them the railroad people. Yeah. Well, after Herschel come, they had already had plans to enclose the stadium that end. Well, when they closed it, they had to move that railroad track back. They cut the railroad up, and you can see that's what that is if you look at the profile. Mm -hmm. That's part of that railroad track, that very railroad track. The alumni had it cut up, numbered, and sold. And I got it through an auction there when uh, the auction was held by the alumni, and I paid way too much money for it, so I thought. I think I ended up giving $325 for it. Dr. Kirkland, who's a huge was a huge George, Georgia football fan. He says, I bid $300, he said, and I cut it off. And then he offered me three fifty for it. Yeah. But I've, I've kept it all these years, and I, I plan on keeping it. Yeah, that's a great story. And people will remember that. And, and what a, a icon of, of that area it was. Exactly. What a, a piece of history, that railroad yeah. track. If you saw a game on when they when they would show it, they would yeah, always, they would go, always down go those and, people. Yeah, yes. they go show you yes. that railroad track. You didn't have to pay to get in. That's right. You went over and said, "Oh, railroad track, watch well, the game." Yeah, and yeah. just like just like now, on the other end, you used to have people standing on the bridge looking in. Right. You know. Yeah. It was. It was, yeah. it was pretty neat to get a piece of that. Yeah, I bet. Just just like this right here. Uh huh. This was a. Now you can see these on the internet but it was the official mug, the championship mug. It's got the Bulldog profile. It's got the scores well, and everything. Well, how about that? That's yeah. a nice one. So, yeah, you don't drink out of that too much, do you? No. <laughs> and then, of course, I have the tray and the bottles and stuff like that. Yeah. But then it was over for 40-something years. 
I mean, I had what I had, and that was it. Still watch the games, yeah. but there was really nothing to collect, you know. Sure. But what were you thinking? I mean, you followed the dogs. Everybody followed the dogs. Sometimes we get to halftime against South Carolina, and everybody go out in the yard to go fishing or go do <laughs> something else. It'd be Georgia, uh, Florida, you know, and, and it, you'd get to halftime or third quarter, or you had the game over, and you'd throw your hat down and, and, and go on. But every week, every year, we're right back watching the dogs. Well, you know, it just kind of grows on you, and after – you have a championship. It just you want more. You want more. And and we had under Mark Rich Ayers, this is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I think he's a fine Christian man. Sure. He just didn't have that killing, you know, that, that you know, it we Killer gotta instinct. Hit him. Yeah. He didn't have yeah. it. Yeah. And oh uh, we had I mean great quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, Matthew Stafford, right. Murray, mm -hmm. and and we were like two games away from being there again. Mm. We, we just couldn't get there. Mm. And when Kirby come in, he brought a new dimension because uh, he was former, former football player in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I think he had great leadership under Nick Saban. Sure. And after watching him in TCU, I did a little background on TCU, the coach there, and I don't remember his name, but he gave Kirby his Smith first coaching job and Valdosta, at Valdosta State, and his salary, his first year in coaching, was $8,000 a year. <laughs> it's come a long way. A long way. Yeah, yeah a real yes, long way. But but we, we came along, and, and there was nothing in between. There was no other memorabilia, nothing no, you no. got. It wasn't worth having. No, no. Did you still? It, it, you, know, you know, you still watch the games. Yeah. You know, and, and really in the Mark Rich era, I feel like we had three or four teams that should have won the championship. We just didn't get pushed through. So, no, didn't really have anything to keep from those other times. But, man, how time changed. Oh, goodness. The last two years, and, you know, I, I'm up in age a little bit. To, to see what I've seen the last two years is like a just a a postage stamp, a final stamp of approval. Yeah. You got to live long enough to see it. Hmm. And then to turn around and see it the second year, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And then the next thing was I could get stuff. I mean, the, the minute we won the next day, I'm on the internet looking. And if you, you got to get in early to get the signed stuff. Sure. You know, you yeah, got yeah. to get in there early. And so, I mean, I so was What was your first piece of, on, off the first championship? What was the first thing you grabbed? On the first championship? Yeah. This. I don't know, but I mean second championship. Second no, championship is going to be this right here. All right. And if you look at this, uh -huh. you got Kirby up here yep. holding the trophy. Yeah. You got Stetson passing. Yep. Ringo intercepting Bryce Young. Yeah. You got Adona Mitchell catching a 40-yard touchdown pass mm -hmm. and a Brock Bowers with 13, 13 yard. And I mean, it, it's, it's a nice, beautiful. it's a yeah. nice, it came like that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember where I got it, but I hadn't seen any more of those. And it's just a, a real nice piece. Yeah. And then I've got this. I, I think I got this after last year when they won last year. Yeah. And this has got the Ohio, Georgia, Tennessee. And then this is our, our complete you know, no loss season, you know, right. per perfect season. Right. And the back-to-back -back championship. Mm -hmm. And then we got these four signed photographs. Mm -hmm. And I, I picked them up from a friend. And it's, of course, Ringo signed, Stetson Bennett signed, Jordan Davis signed, and Brock Bauer signed. Mm -hmm. And then I have this limited print with Stetson right here. Mm-hmm. And it's got some stats on him there. Now, I am a Stetson Bennett fan. Yeah. To me, uh, he, he is a Georgia hero. Yeah. And, I mean, this is a hero, and that's your hero. Now, the last two years, we've been loaded with people that will qualify and will be remembered forever. Jordan Davis, mm. Ringo, yeah. Jalen Carter. Mm. I mean, those guys are just amazing. But Stetson put his name on the map. I was a Stetson fan when he got there. Uh, my banker, one of my bankers, Derek Harden, and I used to talk about it. And 
yeah, I just I just don't know. But I made a believer out of him with Stetson <laughs> Bennett, or Stetson made a believer out yeah, of him. Yeah. You know, so we're Stetson Bennett fans. Well, good that you had faith in him, but he had faith in himself. You know, his story is incredible. It's something to apply to all of our lives, most of our lives, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It, they, it, they talk about his size. The yeah. man thinks he's 6'5". I mean, it's, you know, and when he got the chance, the last year he was there, when Monken told him, you know, if you want to leave again, because you're not going to get to play, yeah. you know. I mean, the man played with a chip on his shoulder. And he had legs. I mean, he could run. Yeah. I do not believe, and I hope, I hope, I'm, you know, we like to be proved wrong a lot. Yeah. I hope I'm proved wrong. I do not believe we will win the third championship with a pocket quarterback. Those days are dwindling fast. You've yeah. got to have a mobile quarterback, mm -hmm. and Stetson Bennett proved it. Yeah. We get a mobile quarterback, then the defense have got two guys to worry about in the backfield sure, rather sure. than one. Yeah. So. Yeah. But at the same time, a running quarterback got to be able to throw the ball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to have a good arm. You got to be able to read. Got to be able to have that. Yes, yeah. so exactly yeah. right. Read it's that a balance. defense. It's a balance. Yes, sir. Hopefully, we got it. You just keep crossing your fingers, keep saying go dogs, and, and maybe that, we'll get there, right? That's right. Let's talk about a couple other pieces that you got around here now. Helmet. Okay. I got a Stetson Bennett signed helmet, a Stetson Bennett signed football. The football is from the first championship. The second one is from the first championship. I mean, the helmet is from the first championship. Yeah. And then I've got goo coodles of, of bottles, you know, championship bottles. I got a couple things on the back wall I'm sure we can look at. Yeah, yeah. Okay, over here, it's Atlanta Journals. They put a print out in yeah. the newspaper, excuse uh -huh. me. Yeah. And I've got those here. It says the year of the dog. <laughs> and if you look through right there, yeah. it's just all about the dogs and how they won. It's just a whole paper. Yeah. That was one. And then here's the other one. That's uh, the second one we won. Mm -hmm. They had that paper. And then this one. Perfect. Georgia makes history. Yeah. 15 and 0, repeat as champ. Yeah. I actually have those papers, so I'm hanging on to them. Yeah. Hopefully they'll last. Mm -hmm. And then these covers are laminated and fixed by the Atlanta Journal in that and frame. Yeah. And which you can show them in a minute. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. They're, they're, yeah. they're Beautiful. really nice. How did it feel the first time we beat Alabama? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how. You know, you just want to run outside and holler in your neighborhood. <laughs> but, yeah, it's uh, – and, and the sad part is it should have happened a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But I really believe – the year they beat us, when when we was trying to get there, yeah. and when they when they beat us in the uh, SEC championship, I think mm -hmm. in my mind that Kirby told them guys, just go out there. If we get beat, we still there. It don't matter. We'll get them. And I just don't believe them guys put forth the effort because they didn't. It didn't look like Alabama beat us. It looks like we let them beat us mm. so we could beat them in the championship because they had beat us in the championship, you know. Yeah. And when they went out there and played like they did, mm. it was just, you know, it's, it's, it's a good feeling when you beat them. Mm. And I may be a little lopsided about this, but the media always tout Alabama, Ohio, Michigan, and it used to be Florida. They, they just always kind of push Georgia to the side. But the last two years, they have to recognize us because we put it out there. Yeah. And so I really like that. You know, I mean, we were national champions last year, and they, I think they started off at us at th rated right third or fourth. Sure. And we just keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What a tradition. And you say... It's because of recruiting. Talk about that, what oh, you gosh. feel. Yeah. Well, I think some of the demise in Alabama is because Kirby Smart is not there recruiting. Mm. And, uh, you know, from the best things that I've heard, Kirby did recruiting. Nick would go sign the papers. But Kirby's doing the recruiting now, yeah. 
and signing them up. So Nick lost that, and Georgia didn't only get a coach. He's got a master at recruiting. Yeah. And then he, he was on the team, so he knows what you need and how that feels. And I think the recruiting has been one of the major success stories. As far as the portal is concerned, mm. we haven't used that a lot. It's been detrimental to us in some yeah. ways. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan of the portal. Um, but we, we've recruited some really, really good players that's come in and looked at it and says, God, how lucky I am to be here playing for this guy. Yeah. And I think we're going to see a lot of years. And look at the amount of players in the NFL from Georgia, even well, even when uh, Rich was there. Well, now look at Philadelphia. It's not the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> it's the Philadelphia Bulldog Tide. I mean, it's just Alabama and Georgia players. Yeah. And yeah. they are wreaking havoc, by the way. Yeah, yeah, all right. Thank you. We'll take a short break and be right back. You stay with us. Hey, my name's Chandler Gerard. I'm Kyle Gerard with A-plus Flooring and Construction. And here at A-plus Flooring and Construction, we believe in teamwork. Come let our team service you with floor and construction and garage doors. So come shop with us at A-plus Flooring and Construction at 371 Georgia Highway 338 or visit our website at aplusconstruction.biz. Or give us a call at 478-676-2662. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Dustin Gay. I'm a local orthopedic surgeon with Houston Clinic Orthopedics, and we'd really like to invite everybody to come out to our new uh, office facility to take a look at it. It's a larger space with physical therapy, and uh, we're just excited to have it, and we'd love for people to come out and visit us. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic Medical Drive in Dublin. Welcome you back. Nothing like talking about the Bulldogs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the closer to Saturday, it gets closer to game day. You, you just get enthralled, you know, you, you're texting you, you, your friends, you know, go dogs, you, you're talking about it. Uh, I, I get reports from, from a couple of them on the injuries that morning or Absolutely. the weather's going to be a little different and they didn't expect it like the rain came in, you know, a week or so ago. And it's just, it's in, enthralling. It's so fun. It's great to go to a game. It's great to watch it at home in the comfort of our, our, our houses. But at home, it you is get great. the replays. <laughs> and every morning uh, when I go out and I, before I read my Bible or I'll whip out my little dog out, Dog Nation, mm -hmm. and look and see what they said and what's going on, kind of mm -hmm. get the injury just like you said. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting prepared for Saturday. Yeah. And I know yeah. this one, this Saturday is going to be at night, and that's going to be exciting. Yeah. And then we got, we're on a course. We, we got to go forward and, you know, just buckle down and do it like we have done. Right. What I don't like to hear this year, oh, Georgia's got an easy schedule. Georgia's got the best schedule. Yeah. That's all you hear. Yeah. Okay. For the last five years, we've had the hardest schedule in the country. Yeah. And we won two national championships. Mm -hmm. Alabama didn't play nobody last year. Mm -hmm. Ohio don't play nobody but Michigan. I mean, Michigan don't play nobody but Ohio and Notre Dame. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, we started off, we started off with Clemson the year we won. Sure. We started off with Oregon last year. Right. I mean, so give us a break. I yeah. mean, it, it's it's our time to have a schedule that benefits us. Sure. Now we got to go out and claim it. That's for sure. That's for sure. But hey, you got a couple of great magazines over here. Let's talk about Top Dog. Okay. Well, if you go right to the left under Top Dog, you'll see that was the magazine after the 1980 championship. That was called Glory Glory. And Louis Grizzard and Lauren Smith, they come in my restaurant and ate dinner. Mm. They were on that book tour. Right. That's their book. And inside that cover, it's signed to Monty Hester, mm. uh, Mercer's Fried Chicken, mm. and it's signed by both of them, nice. the Georgia Dog. And then I've got the Top Dog magazine. Uh, that was when they won the second championship. And then the other ones is when they won the back-to-back -back championship. But the third book over, fourth book over, is another glory, glory. That's, you know, after winning another championship. Yeah, so yeah. They're, they're real special. Mm -hmm. And then over on the table, I have about four or five 
Sports Illustrated, old Sports Illustrated. Let's see. With Herschel on the cover. Yeah. Mm. Priceless. Yes. Yes. Priceless. Hey, hey, you can't be a dog without loving a dog. Yeah. And you love Ugga too, don't you? Ugga 10. <laughs> right there. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we, we got a new one now, but that really was the first chance I had to get that. And there was a guy come through two to three years ago selling them. And he come in, and I don't think I was here. Or I was, and one of these people, what somebody worked for me, may have called my wife. And she told him she'd take it, and somehow she got it. Anyway, I got it for Christmas from my wife. Nice. Some guy was selling them, come through selling them, and yeah. I ended up yeah. with it. So. Yeah, that's I, awesome. I, yeah. I love it. Yeah, he won two championships. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. And, and uh, so... How do you get ready uh, for game day when you're at the house? Well, what do you love to do if it's a uh, you know three o'clock or five o'clock, eight o'clock game? I don't give a big really, really and truly, I, I try to find all the pregame stuff I can find, um, and that talks about Georgia. Mm -hmm. If there's somebody on that we're gonna play, I want to watch them. Yeah, uh, and, and I, I'm constantly flipping channels to see. Uh, the potential people we're going to play and how mm -hmm. they stack up. Yeah. Just like I watched Florida and, and um, uh, um, Tennessee last week. Yeah. Because all I've heard is Tennessee, who's we got to worry about this yeah. year. Yeah, and there, lo and behold. Florida beat the rucking out of Tennessee. But if you watch that game, in spite of how we've looked this year, neither one of those look better than Georgia. Yeah. And that's our main two, unless we just drop the ball. Right, right. Um Looking on, not that just this year, but in, in a few years to come, how, how do you feel about Georgia? How will Georgia do, in, in your estimate, and what will it take to continue the success? Well, number one is going to be the recruiting. Number one for Kirby Smart to stay there with his intensity, and I don't think that man's going to lose it. I mean, you know who he reminds me of running up and down the sidelines, Steve Spurrier? Wow. And, uh, That's uh, almost a cuss word. Steve Spurrier <laughs> literally hated Georgia. Yeah. He was like Florida fans. Yeah. It don't matter who beats Florida, uh, Georgia just as long as they get beat. He, he, you know, I pulled for Florida when they was Tim Tebow and them going for the championship because sure. they was SEC. Sure. But for Spurrier, uh, Nick Saban, they don't pull for Georgia. They yeah. hate him. You know, Nick, Nick has said on more than one occasion, we should have lost the Ohio game because that was a targeting in the end zone. Anybody that's looked at that picture tells the man hit him with his shoulder. It was not targeting. But the Ohio coach has never said that. Yeah, yeah. It's a different story. Different story. Yeah, it is. Monty, hey, all I can say is, man, thanks for sharing all this beautiful memorabilia. Uh, it, it says something about you and how you love your state, how you love your football team how you love your community as well, what you've done through the years. I'm just glad to be able to come in today and, and sh let you share some of it with our viewers, with people across the Internet. And um, anything we miss, Monty, you, you're no, kind of eyeing around. No, you got you so I'm much, just looking, man. I got yeah. a Georgia clock up there. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, Ron, you've been a, a good friend for a long time, and I've known you for a long time. People has been good to me mm -hmm. in, in Dublin. My wife works over at the VA. Um, we, we kind of stay at home a lot, but, uh, it, it, you know, when people comment on this stuff, it makes you feel good, you yeah. know, because you, you collected. Yeah. And in all honesty, you spend a lot of money to collect it. You right, know? right. And I, 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 sometimes I think if my wife needs what I pay for this stuff, I'd have to take her on a little shopping spree. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, don't let her watch this, money for sure. She knows. She knows. But that. I really appreciate the opportunity yeah. to. I love showing this stuff to people. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you support the dogs, and this is one more way, yes. Monty, that you support Georgia right. Bulldogs. And, and Monty, I guess we should just leave it with go dogs. Go dogs, yes, sir.